Okay, I forgot to record all of that. Brutal. Um, okay, so quick recap here. Three objectives for today's lab. Find area under the normal curve. Find z-score given area. Determine if the data is normal. When we are finding area underneath the normal curve, we have two situations that could be presented to us. In the first situation, we are given the z-score directly. So we might be asked, what is the probability the z-score is less than a value? What is the probability the z-score is greater than a value? This kind of thing. If you haven't seen this yet, you will see this in detail in lecture. This is just a crude overview. So here, for example, if we want to find the probability z, a z-score is less than 2.1, a z-score is a standard normal random variable, so a variable that has mean zero and standard deviation one. We can always sketch a normal curve centered at zero. That is the standard normal curve. We mark down where our z-score is. In this case, z is 2.1, and then we look, and then we shade the area that we want. Every probability is an area underneath the curve. So the probability z is less than 2.1 is this red shaded area shown here in the first illustration. And then what I need to do is figure out the size of this area. The traditional way to do that is by looking it up in the normal table. So for example, here I look up 2.1 and that gives me 0 0.9821. Okay. So that's where this first area came from. In the second illustration, I have a normal value with mean two and sigma 1.5. So in this situation, I'm not starting with standard normality. I am starting with general normality. So I have a random variable that's normal, but it is not standard normal. It admits a different mean and a different standard deviation or variance. I want to know the probability that this value is greater than three. So here is my initial sketch of the problem. I'm looking for this red shaded part here. How do I do this? I just convert to standard normality. So I said Z is, is X minus mu over sigma. That's three minus two over 1.5, which is 0 0.66. So basically the probability that X is greater than three is the same thing as Z being greater than 0 0.66. So my second sketch, mimics what we had in example A. When I look up 0 0.66 in the table, I end up with um, the value to the left or the area under the curve to the left of that quantity. So here's 0 0.66, 0 0.7454. When I mark that down here, this is the area to the left, so the unshaded part in sketch two. I want the area to the right, so I just subtract from one because total area under the curve is equal to one. Okay. Apologies for the late recording start. <clears throat> okay, in the second um, set of examples, we're going in the opposite direction. So for example here, we might have the following. All right. So maybe I am told the following. This area here, This is a size of 0 0.36, okay? And then the question is, what z-score has 0 0.3600 of the area under the curve to its right. Okay, so this is what we're trying to solve now. In the first two illustrations, we started with a Z value or an X value and we found area underneath the curve. In this illustration, we are starting with area under the curve and we are trying to find the Z score. Okay, now you'll see that in lecture, this is um, this z score is labeled z subscript 0 0.3600. Okay, so 
Z subscript 0.36 is just a special notation to describe the Z score with 0.36 of the area to its right. Again, you'll see lots of examples of this notation in lecture, but this thing here, this Z subscript 0.360, that's one number, and that's the number that we are looking for. Okay, so how are we gonna solve this problem? Well, all we're really gonna do here is we're going to find the area to the left okay so that is going to be 1 minus 0 0.3600 which is 0 0.6400 So this part here is a size 0 0.6400. Okay, that's the first step. Now, we just need to find the z-score. So to find the z-score, we go to our normal table again. This would be the traditional approach. This is what we're going to learn how to do in our commander today. We would look up 0 0.640 which is closest to this quantity here, 0 0.6406. Then we would come out to the axes, 0 0.36. So the Z score that would be of interest to us, the Z score that we're looking for in this problem is a Z equals 0 0.36, right? So again, we've just gone in the opposite direction now. Okay, so the second illustration under the same problem set, would be the more general type of, um, uh, would be the generalization of this problem. So for example, say X is normal with uh, mu equals three, sigma equals two. Find the 75th percentile of X. Okay, so this would be sort of the generalization of uh, example A in part two. Okay, so what do we have to do here? The first thing that we should always do when we're working with these kind of problems is sketch. So, is draw, we should all draw together. So we would sketch out our normal curve. This thing is gonna be centered at three. And what we wanna know is the 75th percentile. So we wanna know the value of X that sits here such that this red shaded part here is a size of 0 0.75. Okay, that's the problem. So it's really not all that different from what we just looked at. 75th percentile, percentiles are always measured from the bottom up. So we're starting from negative infinity and we're working our way all the way up to 0 0.75. Okay, um, right, so what is this value of x? Okay, so we're looking for, this would be x 0 0.02, x 0 0.25 by definition. Again, don't worry too much about that right now. We're gonna talk more about notation in lecture, but technically speaking, this is the quantity we want. So the question is just, what is X subscript 0 0.25 equal to? This is what we're trying to find. We're just trying to find this value. So the first thing we're gonna do is find Z subscript 0 0.25, okay? So we're gonna sketch our normal curve here. We have zero. We're gonna have the Z score located here. And then we will have this red shaded part here, which is a size of 0 0.75. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the normal table. This would be the traditional approach, what we're gonna learn how to do in our commander. We're gonna look up 0 0.75 which is 
uh, in between 0 0.7486 and 0 0.7517. 0 0.7486 is 0 0.014 units away. 0 0.7517 is 0 0.017 units away. So we're just gonna take the closer value, which is this one. Again, what this kind of, and what this sort of emphasizes is, is the rounding error that occurs with the normal table. This is something we're going to be able to avoid in our commander because we'll be able to get exact value. But anyways, so we're going to take, in the traditional approach, we would take these two values here. We come out to the axis and we get 0 0.67. So the 75th percentile of the standard normal distribution is 0 0.67. Now what we have to do is convert this to an x value. So we know z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. This means that z sigma is equal to x minus mu, which means that z sigma plus mu is equal to x, which means that x is equal to z sigma plus mu. Okay? Just a little bit of rearrangement of the norm of the conversion formula. Uh, conversion formula. Okay. All right, so now we can just plug in. So we're gonna have x is equal to z sigma plus mu is equal to zero point six seven multiplied by um, two plus three. Uh, what's this going to be? Four carry the one, three, one point three plus three equals four point three four. Okay, and then this is our answer. All right, so what we have seen here are again crude summaries. You're going to see lots of detail about how to do this using the table in lecture. I apologize if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but th this is the outline of what it is. So we're looking for area underneath the curve and we are looking for a Z score given a, a particular area underneath said curve. The traditional way of handling this problem is via the standard normal table. So those illustrations that I showed you of the table values, this table is the, will be the focus of lecture. So learning how to use this table. In our commander, we're basically just doing what the table does for us, but we're going to be able to get more precise values because we have um, the ability to measure the curve to a precise spot, or we can measure the area under the curve to a precise spot given the, uh, that software. Okay, now the last thing um, that we need to talk about, I should label these as this is step one, step two, step three. Uh, three. The last thing is basically just answering the question, is my data normal? Okay. And in particular, is my quantitative continuous data normal? Um, all right, so to answer this question is very easy. We're going to use a normal probability plot. Okay, so basically all we're going to do is learn how to use R Commander to construct a normal probability plot. And then we're just going to check if that plot gives evidence that the data is normal. In lecture, you're gonna learn how to do this by hand via another table. With our commander, we just get to skip over the table part and construct that plot directly. And then we all we have left to do is interpret the plot. All right, so how do we do all of this stuff in our commander? Now, ideally, what I would be able to do is help is work through the exercises that I'm about to show you while being able to sketch it. That's going to require me to be sharing the screen and splitting back and forth, and it might be a little bit clunky. Um, so for now, I'm just going to um, I'm going to share my desktop screen with our commander, and we're just going to sort of 
try and sort it out as best we can from there. And I'll sketch as needed to try and help the problem. Okay, so here are the set of questions that we're gonna be answering. So from the demo file, we're gonna be working through 10, we're gonna work through 11, and then we're gonna work through a particular parts of number 12 um, to help us with the, the quantile plot. Okay, so here's my R screen. Everyone should be able to see this, I hope. I'm gonna open up R Commander now. There it is. Okay. Ah, no, come back. All right. So let's look at a few introductory examples and then we'll start working through that problem. First off, how do I use R Commander to find area underneath the curve? Okay. It's pretty straightforward. It's almost the same. Uh, no input file for now. We're, we don't need it at this point. So this is almost the same as when we used the. Um, the binomial distribution. Okay, so the key are distributions, continuous distributions, normal distribution. And then you're gonna see we have normal quantiles, normal probabilities, plot normal distribution, sample from normal. So it actually gives us a lot of different options. We're gonna start off with normal probabilities. So this would be the function that we wanna use or the the part of our commander that we want to use to find area underneath the curve. Okay, so you can see that the way that this is set up is very useful to us. We enter a variable value, we enter the mean of the distribution, and then we enter the standard deviation. The beauty of this is that in the second, in example B of the first objective, where I had to convert to standard normality, we don't need to do that in our commander. We can just tell it what the mean and the deviation of our particular um, curve is, and it'll give us the area directly. You will also notice that it gives us a lower and an upper tail option. Lower tail means area to the left, upper tail, area to the right. Let's say, for example, we wanted to find the probability Z is less than 2.1. So let's perform the first example that I wrote down in our commander. Okay, so in that problem, we were starting with a Z score. So the Z score has mean zero and standard deviation one. So that's already plugged in for us. The variable value is 2.1. So we just type 2.1 into our commander. We want the area to the left of 2.1, so this is a lower tail problem. We click OK, and it gives us 0 0.9821356. And if you compare this number to the value that we wrote down on the slide, you'll see that they're equivalent to four decimal places. Okay, so we're just verifying what we did in the first problem. In the second problem, we were asked, what is the probability x is greater than 3 if mu is 2 and sigma is 1.5? So we click distributions, continuous, normal, normal probabilities. Here, we're going to switch this to a 3. The mean of our distribution is now 2, and the standard deviation is 1.5. We want the probability that x is greater than 3, so this is now an upper tail problem. We click OK. That gives us 0 0.2524. So again, we have a bit of rounding error compared to, or the answer I gave was a bit off because of the rounding problem, but you can see that those numbers are almost the same, at least the two decimal places. All right. So if we wanted to find area underneath a normal curve using R Commander, we don't need to convert anything. We just have to use the correct mean, the correct standard deviation. Our variable value is the value that we're interested in. 
And then we just tell R if we want lower or if we want to the left or to the right of that value. And visually, those two problems would be represented through what I sketched at the start of class in objective one examples A and B. Okay, in objective two, we are going in the opposite direction now. So we are given area under the curve and we wanna find a particular z-score. So for example, in this situation, so when we're looking for a z value and not an area, we would now be going to normal quantiles. So we're gonna go distributions, continuous, normal, normal quantiles. So we use normal quantiles to find an actual value of z. Okay, so again, we have options for lower and upper tail, mean standard deviation. So what we're gonna do here is in the first problem, we had area of size 0 0.36 to the right. So we can do this in two ways. We can click upper tail and type in 0 0.36. So this is telling R that we have 0 0.36 to the right of some Z score. If we click okay, this tells us the Z score is 0 0.358. We had an answer of 0 0.36. It's kind of funny how those two numbers worked out. And you can see that that matches what we, get, we found in the illustration. Okay, we can do it another way. We go back to normal quantiles. If we type lower tail, in this case, we just need to tell R the area below the z-score, which would be 0 0.64. We click okay, we get the same answer. So the normal quantiles are used to find z-scores, the value along the axes, and the probabilities are used to find area underneath the curve. In part example B, we wanted to find the 75th percentile of x, where x was a normal with mu equals 3 and sigma equals 2. So what we would do here is distributions, continuous, normal, normal quantiles, Here we would type in 0 0.75. That's a lower tail because we're looking for a percentile. The mean is three and the standard deviation is two. We click okay and we get 4.3489. And you can see that that's very close to the value we found using the table. Okay. So what we are learning to do is use our commander to find area under the curve and to find quantiles or percentiles of the distribution of interest. The last thing we need to learn how to do is find a normal probability plot. I'm gonna go through a few more examples of these first two ideas and then we'll do the probability plot. Okay, so from the demo file, we are interested in solving the following four problems. You use mean equals zero, SD equals one when it is standard normal. Okay, so question, this is uh, from the demo uh, exercises. So we, we're doing question 10. Assume that the wigs, wingspan of a certain type of monarch butterfly is normally distributed with a mean of 10.3 and a standard deviation of 0 0.6. Answer the following questions. All right, I'm just gonna bounce back and forth a little bit here because I really feel that the visualization aspect of this helps a lot with the problem. So in this particular illustration, we can visualize this as follows. Oh, sorry, one sec. So I just need to stop this. Start this. Oh, there we go. This is the clunkiness that I worried of.
Okay, maybe this isn't going to work out now. Technology. Okay, never mind. Um, okay, so sorry about that. Um, share Okay, so <laughs> sorry about that. I was hoping I could bounce back and forth, but um, didn't seem to want to work. Mm, no chat box. Okay, so if we were to sketch out this problem, so this is 10, number 10, we would have our normal curve, and then we would have the middle of it being 10.3. We want to find the probability that a monarch butterfly has a wingspan of no less than 11.2. Okay, so we are interested here in the probability um, that X is greater than 11.2. That's what we're trying to find. So in the following table, you can see that this has been set up for us. So here we have the probability that X is greater than 11.2. This is what we're trying to find. Again, because it says the probability that a monarch butterfly has a wingspan of no less than 11.2. All right, so this is going to be one minus the probability X is less than 11.2. And if we wanted to take a really long sort of look at this problem, we could start to, um, well, what we could do is we could convert it to a Z score and go through the steps that were illustrated on the slide. But we don't need to do that because we're using R Commander. So what we're gonna have here instead is the following. We're looking for an area underneath the curve. So we want the area to the right of 11.2. So we click distributions, we click continuous, we click normal, normal probabilities in this case because we're looking for area under the curve. We want the variable value here to be 11.2. Our mean is 10.6, because that's what's given to us in the problem. So we're told here that the wingspan is normally distributed with a mean of 10.3, sorry, and a standard deviation of 0 0.6. So we have 10.3, 0.6. Okay, so we want the area to the right of 11.2 because it's saying that the wingspan is no less than 11.2, which means the probability is greater than 11.2. So the easiest way to do this is to click upper tail because that's what we're looking for is the, the upper tail of the distribution. We click okay and we get the following, P norm, is equal to um, what is written below here. Okay, so our answer in this case is directly, if we do it this way, 0 0.0663. Okay, so the probability that a monarch butterfly has a wingspan of no less than 11.2 centimeters is 6.68%. Now, if we wanted to do it in a more traditional way, where we take one minus uh, the probability X is less than, in our commander, we would have the exact same setup. We would click lower tail in this case. That gives us 9 okay, and then here we would simply have equals one minus 0 0.9331928, which is equal to 0 0.068072. Okay. And then you can see that in that case, we end up with the exact same solution. So using the upper and lower tail switch, 
obviously makes the problem a little bit quicker. But if you want to stick to doing strictly left tail type calculations and utilize the complementation rule, which is sort of the standard way of teaching the problem, um, this would be an example of how to do that. Okay, so it's, it's a little bit different, more difficult to see without the, the illustration. I was hoping I'd be able to draw it, but um, I wasn't, didn't seem to be able to get it to work. Uh, let me just give it one more shot. I just, I think it's very valuable. So if I stop share here, go back here. I would like to share my screen. Hmm. Unfortunate. All right. <clears throat> okay, so part B, find the probability that a monarch butterfly has a wingspan of at most eight centimeters. So now what we're asking is what is the probability the wingspan is less than eight? So in part B, we are working with the exact same normal distribution that we had before, okay? 10.3, 0 0.6. What we are trying to find in this illustration is the probability that X is no more than eight. Oh, sorry. Oh man, I am struggling with it. Uh, yeah, I'll try that, uh, Nicole. Thanks. Okay, so in part B, we're asked, what is the probability that the wingspan is no more than eight centimeters? So what we're looking for here is the probability that X is less than eight. So we're working with the exact same distribution. Okay, so we're still working with the normal distribution that has a mean 10.3 and has standard deviation 0 0.6. This is a left tail problem because we are asked the probability that X is less than eight. So that's nice because it's just a lower tail problem. Okay, <clears throat> so what are we gonna do here? We're gonna go to our R commander screen. So we have distributions, we have continuous, we have normal, and then we have normal probabilities. So again, we're just looking for area underneath the curve. So that's our normal probabilities. In this case, we have a variable value of eight. Our mean is still 10.3 because it's the same distribution. And our standard deviation is still 0 0.6 because it is the same distribution. We want the probability X is less than eight. So it's a lower tail problem in this case. So we click OK. That gives us the following. So here we have. So this means very strictly that this is 0 0.1234632. And then we can say the probability that a monarch butterfly has a wingspan. Um, of no more than eight centimeters is 0 0.0006%. Okay, so let's take one more look at, see if I can get this switch to work one last time, just for illustration purposes. And 
Mm. Very strange. Oh well. Okay, yeah, we'll try holding it up to the screen. That'll work just as well. So uh, I'm just gonna quickly sketch out what we were looking for in the first two problems, just so that we have them. So this is 10 A ten point three. And that problem we had 11.2 here. So then we wanted. Okay, so in 10 A, what we were doing was the following. So we were looking for um, ooh, ooh, the background, a disaster today. So in the first one, we were looking for this area. So this is 10A. We just want that shaded part to the right of 11.2. In 10B, we want an area to the left of um, 8. So in part B, we have the following. Okay, so what we had just found is this. So area to the left of eight. Okay, so those are the two visualizations of the problem. And what we did is we used our commander to find these red shaded parts shown here in part B and shown here. In the first illustration, we had two options. We could take the right tail or we could do one minus left tail. In this one, it's just strictly a left tail approach. So that's kind of the easiest approach, um, at least in terms of the table, but in R it's the same thing really. All right, so now we're working on question three or part C of, of Q10. So I'm gonna read the problem, then I will sketch it, and then I'll show you how to do it in uh, R Commander. So the problem is read 10C. A monarch butterfly has a wingspan in the bottom 2% of wingspans is considered exquisite. Find the highest wingspan that a monarch butterfly considered exquisite will have. Okay, so this is a wordy problem, but basically all it's asking us is what value of X represents um, the 2% mark of the distribution. So basically what this question is asking us is what is the second percentile? That, that's all it's really saying. Okay, so what is second percentile? Okay, so the sketch is gonna look something like this. So we're gonna have our curve centered at 10.3 again. And now what we're gonna have <clears throat> is a red shaded area in the lower tail of the curve. And that red shaded area is going to be a size of 0 0.02. All right, so here is a sketch of what we're looking for uh, in 10C. Okay, so we have our distribution centered at 10. <laughs> it just looks hilarious to see my head behind the iPad. Okay, so this, the distribution is centered at 10.3. And then it's telling us that the lower tail is a size of 0 0.02. So this red shaded part here, we already know its size. In the previous examples, we were looking for size of red shaded parts. So looking for area under the curve. Here we are starting with area under the curve. All right. So what we want to know is what is the value of that black horizontal line? What value is that equal to? So this is an inverse problem. So we're going from area to a value of x now. Okay, so how would we solve this? In our commander, we would go to distributions, continuous, normal, and we would click normal quantiles. Okay, so we have area under the curve. We wanna get a normal, we wanna get an actual value of X rather than a, a probability. So we click quantiles. The probability that we want is just 0.02. The mean of our distribution is 10.3, and the standard deviation is 0 0.6. Okay. 
because it's a percentile, we're doing a lower tail calculation. So we're starting at negative infinity and working our way up to that value. So we click OK. And that gives us the following 9.06. So you can see that this is actually already given to us in the problem, but I'll just write it below anyways. So we're still working with the same normal distribution. So we have mean 10.3, standard deviation 0 0.06. And we want to find the value of x such that the area below that number is 0 0.02. So what we would have here is, um, x equals 9.07. So we would say the highest wingspan that an exquisite monarch butterfly could have is 9.07 centimeters, or the second percentile of the distribution of wingspans is, is 9.07 centimeters. Right. Um, okay, part D, <clears throat> what do we have here? A monarch butterfly with a wingspan in the top 1% is considered extraordinary. Find a wingspan that a monarch butterfly would need to have in order to be considered extraordinary. All right, so basically we have the same problem again. The difference is just a slight twist in wording. In part C, we have bottom 2%. In top 100, or in part D, we have top 1%. So in part D, we're actually looking for the 99th percentile. So this is what the problem would look like uh, visually. So we would have D, we would have a sketch of our curve. Right? And then we would have uh, our value of X here. And the red shaded part that we're told about is the top 0 0.01, so that would be that this size here is 0 0.01. Right there, okay. So you can see that what we have is our curve centered at 10.3, that's this thing right here. And they say the top 1% is considered extraordinary. So the top 1% means that in the upper right tail of the curve, we have 0 0.01 of the area. So what we want to know is what value of x corresponds to putting 0 0.01 in that um, top tail. So we can do this in two ways. We can figure out what the left tail side is worth. So basically that this unshaded part is 0.99. And then we can just do 0.99 lower tail in R. Or we can just type 0 0.01 in right tail directly. So that would look like this. Okay, so we have here distributions, continuous, normal, normal quantile. We would have 0 0.01 and we would just click upper tail. We click OK. We get 11.69581. So what we would have here is the following. All right. So for the same normal distribution, we want to find x such that the probability that x is greater than x is equal to 0 0.01. And this is the same x for which the probability x is less than x equals 0 0.99, okay? And then what we found is that x in this case equals 11.696. So we would say a, one, uh, a monarch butterfly is considered extraordinary if their wingspan exceeds 11.696 centimeters or the 99th percentile 
of the distribution of wingspans is 11.696. So those are illustrations of basically the first two objectives, finding area under the curve. So in part A and part B, <laughs> we found area underneath the curve. And then in part C and part D, we found um, basically markers on the axis that just correspond to percentiles. And that's typically the kind of problem that we'll be focused on when we have an area under the curve. Most often it's what is the percentile of this particular normal distribution. In lecture or by hand, we have to use the normal table to do all of these things. But with our commander, it's very easy to do this. We just basically um, tell the system what percentile we want, and then we can let it know whether or not it's an upper tail or a lower tail percentile. As a, just as a note here, like say for the last problem, we, I told it the upper 1%. So what I did is I typed 0.01 .01 and put lower tail, but if I would, or put upper tail, if I typed lower tail and just made this 0 0.99, then I would get the exact same answer, right? So the upper 1% and the lower 99%, that's the same thing. Okay, um, let's look at question 11. A pizza delivery company advertises that they will give you your pizza for free if it takes more than a certain number of minutes to deliver it. They wish to only have, they only, they wish to only give away free pizzas at most 0.5% of the time. And their delivery time follows a normal distribution with a mean of 20 minutes and a standard deviation of three. They wish to advertise in whole numbers. What number of minutes will they advertise and why? Okay, so what we're doing here is basically determining, <clears throat> given their average delivery time of 20 minutes, plus or minus three minutes, what number of minutes can they advertise to customers such that they only give away pizzas 0.5% of the time? That's basically the goal. So what is the correct number of minutes to tell a customer they will deliver the pizza in such that only 0.5% of the time they're gonna to have to give it away. So this is exactly the same problem as 10D. So what we would have here in question 11 is the following. We would have our normal distribution. In this case, it's gonna be centered at 20. And then what we're gonna have is in the upper tail, this red shaded part, which is a size 0 0.005, okay? So that's gonna look like this. Oh wait, I need to do this one. Okay, so that's gonna look like this. Okay, so we're centered at 20 now, and we're a size of 0 0.005 because it's 0.5%. So 0.5% as an area, you divide by 100, you get 0 0.005. Right. So we wanna find the X value that makes that true. Same problem that we just had. We have two ways that we could do this essentially. All right, so the first one is we click continuous, normal, normal quantiles and we type in 0 0.005. This would be the upper tail. Our mean is 20 and our standard deviation is three. Okay, and then we click okay, and we end up with 27.727. All right, so here is our output. Okay. This would be 0.995. Anyways, okay, so this is our output for the problem. So it's telling us basically that the, the exact number of minutes that they would wanna advertise is 27.727. They don't wanna give away pizza more than 0.5% of the time. So what would you wanna do here? You would wanna round up because that's gonna give you even an even smaller margin of error. If you round down, you might actually go outside of the bound of 0.5%. So we would say 
a pizza delivered in um, a pizza delivered after 28 minutes would be considered in this case. All right. So 10 and 11 are utilizing the same techniques. We started off in 10 with finding area under the curve. And then in 11, we are finding a marker given an area under the curve. The last thing that we need to do is the third objective, which is determine if data is actually normal. Um, so we can do this in a couple of ways. Earlier on, uh, there was a question about an input file. Let me just, I'll, I'll use an input file because it'll be a bit easier to explain. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load a data set um, from my computer. So I'm gonna import from Excel. Okay, and I'll just use that, uh, that original data set that we started the lecture with. So everyone should probably have this. Um, lecture here and then it is oh left yeah so we'll do this eight variable sale home that'll be fine for this okay so the input file that i'm using is this eight variable sale home data okay what do i want to do here basically let's say um we what we want to do is check if a particular variable is normal so let's start off by building a histogram. Okay, so let's do a histogram of price, for example. All right. So here is my histogram of price. Now, if this data were normal, what we would expect to see is a histogram that looks like a bell curve. So we would expect to have a peak in the middle and we would have even flow from each side of the peak. So a histogram that comes from a normal distribution would be a symmetric histogram, a unimodal symmetric histogram. So that would look something like this. Okay, so this is what a histogram should look like if it's from a normal distribution. You can notice that there's a little bit of fluctuation in the tails, like it's not exactly perfect, but it's basically unimodal symmetric. So this is what we would expect to see in um, comparison to this, which is very clearly right skewed. Okay, so <clears throat> the follow up to this is basically, is there a more statistical way for us to determine if a particular distribution is actually normal? Like that's the question. So is there a way for us to determine if a particular variable is normal without just looking at histograms? So the main way that we can do this is via what is called a normal probability plot. Building a normal probability plot in R is pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, yeah, it's very straightforward. So we would go to graphs, and then we would click on uh, quantile comparison plot. Okay, and then we would pick our variable, which is price, and then we would click okay. All right, and then we get something that looks like this. Okay, so what is this showing us? Basically, what we would want to see if the data were actually normal, are all of these points following that solid blue line, right? So in this particular case, it's very clear that the data are not normal. We have this like sort of S shape that's going through the points or going through the middle of the, uh, the plot. And those, those points are very clearly not following that solid blue line, all right? Further, what this plot is showing us is that observation 59 and observation 48, those are considered outlying observations. Um, let me see if I can show you what it would look like if it was normal. I should be able to do that pretty easily. Um, 
Okay, I'll show you what it should look like if it's normal using a slightly different plot, but it'll be the same idea. So this is what the plot should look like if it's normal. And then I just need to add one more thing here. Okay, so you can see now, I admit that it's not exactly the same plot, but it is the exact same idea. If the data were normal, all of those individual points that we saw on the previous plot, they should be basically fitted right to that solid blue line. So in this case, it's a black line, but it's, it's solid blue on the original plot shown right here. Okay. So if the data were normal, all of these points here, these little circles, they would be right on top of that blue line. So basically what we're looking for is linearity between the variable and quantiles from the normal distribution. In lecture, what we will learn how to do is build these plots by hand, which is of course a ton of fun. And then um, you will use a visual assessment of that plot that you built by hand to determine if the data is normal. What R allows us to do is just create the plot directly. So all we have to do is go into R, we go graphs, quantile comparison plot, we pick the variable that we want, and then we get our output. And then we're checking to see if these points are hard to that blue line. So if they're sticking to that blue line, if they're linear, essentially. And the other thing that this plot gives us is identification of outliers. So in this case, it's telling us that observation 59 and observation 48 are considered outlying points. Let's see if we can find one that looks a little more normal in here. Um, so if we go quantile comparison plot, let's try area. Okay, so this is even worse. So the plot for area is showing us two outliers, 34 and 40, and it's showing us a very, very heavy skew, which we can see by the shape of the points. So the way that it's, they're sort of zagging here like this. Okay, so if we were to build a box plot or a histogram of the um, area, we should see a heavy skew. Yeah, it's a really heavy right skew. So that quantile plot, it makes sense that it's not linear because the shape of this distribution is clearly not a unimodal bell curve. Um, what else do we have in here that we could try? Uh, size? No, size isn't any good. Let's try age. Yeah, there's too much repetition in the data set, so you can't really even get a sense of it. But the point is, the variable itself, if it is normal, when we, when we build this plot type, so when we go graphs and then we click uh, quantile comparison plot, when we select that variable, if it's normal, the points will just follow that straight blue line in the middle. But in the two situations that we looked at, so for area or for area and for price in particular, very clearly not normally distributed because these points are not following that solid blue line. And an illustration again of what it should look like if the data are actually normal is shown here. So we would have something that looks like this, except it would have that blue structure from before. So the points would just be really well fit to that solid blue line. Okay, so this is how we can check normality using our commander. And then again, these plots, these quantile plots, we're going to learn how to build those by hand in class. Um, okay, so those are the three major things. Finding area underneath the curve, finding percentiles or quantiles of the normal curve, and then checking for normality for a particular variable. And that's what we need for uh, the fifth assignment. So took up a lot of time today. As I mentioned at the start, it's going to be a bit heavy. I also forgot to stop record start recording, so I had to do a little recap there. Um, lab quizzes due this evening at 8. So if you haven't had a chance, uh, make sure you leave yourself about an hour to get that done. 
If you want some practice before from the demo sheet, it would be questions seven through nine. Those would be the relevant practice problems for lab quiz two. If you want to go over submitting answers for the lab quiz, that would be in the um, practice or the lab quizzes section. The first one is a practice quiz, so you can use that to practice submitting. And then otherwise, you can um, uh, start working on the assignment five stuff, all the lab stuff if you want. You could actually check all of the answers for the entire assignment using R Commander, and then you just have to show part A by hand. Yeah, the demo questions, I'll show you where those are. Um, so if you go into Blackboard, okay, so here is my, yeah, one sec here, one. There we go. All right, so you go into Blackboard, you click, on the lab merge section right here. So stat 151 labs merged. And then you click demo and practice, which is also in course content. And then it would be demo questions, which is the second file. And it's questions uh, seven, eight, and nine are the most relevant, are the relevant questions for lab quiz two. And then if you want to practice inserting answers, you just go lab quizzes, practice quiz, practice with an S. All right, so uh, I'll hang around if you guys have any questions. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now and the sharing.